Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And also infinite communication as we are able to connect to higher dimensional beings. This is Loren Gailey and we continue our conversation today about communicating with higher dimensional beings and actually channeling their messages that give us great insights on making our world a better place. My guest today is going to share his unusual experience that accelerated his ability to channel and we are going to be able to hear from the beings that he channels, 12th dimensional beings known as the creators. Daniel Scranton is here with us and he will be channeling his guides and also answering your questions as well. Daniel, thank you for being here. Welcome to Quantum Conversations. Hi, Loren. It's my pleasure to be here. We are happy to have you here. Again, we are connecting with the frequencies of Lemuria as you are beaming your message to us from Maui, the mountaintops of Lemuria. Beautiful day yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, we're, we're on Mount Haleakala. So we're, we're right there in the heart chakra of the entire planet. Beautiful. Okay, we can feel these energies even on this phone call, and we can all connect to them as well. We have a beautiful session in store today as we talk about communicating with higher dimensional beings. And as we get there and, and allow our our listeners to experience their own connection. Let's talk about your connection. I find it fascinating that in the window of 2012, two years ahead actually, is when something extraordinary happened to you. Can you share that story with us? Yes. Um, back in early 2010, it, the, the world was a lot different. Um, than what it is today. So today it seems like a lot of people are channeling and not just channeling higher dimensional beings, but channeling light languages, channeling visions, channeling all sorts of things. But I was very much into the channeling realm, but didn't think of myself as a channel or someone that could channel until these things started happening to me. Because like I said, it wasn't like today where it seems like every third person you meet (laughs) is doing some sort of channeling. Um, So I was just happily attending all of the Abraham Hicks events I could go to. Oh, powerful. Life-changing, actually. Yes. Yeah, it, it all started as many things in my life did back then on one of their cruises, um, I met someone who was having back pain and I, I offered to do Reiki on her. And when I was doing Reiki on her, I felt a jolt of energy move through me and my hands moved by themselves. And after that, I started doing Reiki really regularly on anyone who would uh, have me, (laughs) and sometimes I would just do it from a distance on people, and, but when I was able to do it on someone in person, I noticed my hands were doing that thing where they would move off the person and then move over their body, and then my head started moving in an infinity symbol like Stevie Wonder when he sings, what he does, Mm -hmm. and, um, And then my lips started moving, and that was the first clue I had. This is around January, February 2010. My lips started to move and make whispering sounds like. Mm. And that was the first time I thought, oh, wow, verbal channeling. Maybe that's what's happening to me because I didn't know what was going on. Again, this is not 
today, you, you talk to people and a lot of people have experiences like this, but I didn't know a lot of people back then that were having these types of experiences. So I didn't know what, what it was and until the, the movement of my lips and, and then I, um, I just kept pursuing it. I just kept uh, doing the, the Reiki and, and thinking maybe something's going to come through. But then in March of 2010, that's when I had the experience in the middle of the night that changed everything. I've never had any experience like this before or since. I was having a very vivid dream that was really short where I turned to someone in a desert like area and said to this guy, and someone I knew, I said to him, I understand now about the other beings. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That was the entire dream. And I woke up and I started to feel energy moving through me from the top of my head all the way down to the soles of my feet. And it was ec ecstasy, orgasmic. It was beyond anything I'd ever experienced before. I was I was almost off the bed because I was arching my back, you know, it just felt so good. And I, for a while, I just lay there and I, I was just saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then I would say, um, more please, <laughs> more please. Uh -huh. And eventually I had the thought, what did this have to do with that dream? What did this have to do with aliens? And as soon as I thought the word aliens, I got this huge surge of energy going through me, and I thought, and I just started saying it over and over. <laughs> so I would, so I was like aliens, aliens, aliens. So I could keep feeling the energy, mm -hmm. and then I started talking to them, asking them questions. If the answer was yes, I would get a a huge surge of energy. If it was no, I would get nothing. And then I thought I had an eye mask on the whole time. I thought, well, what? Maybe I can see them. So I took it off, opened my eyes, and as soon as I opened my eyes, it was like the whole experience started all over again, where it, it was just flooding through me, just completely orgasmic energy. And um, I don't even know how long it went on for. I didn't see anything in the room, but it was obvious that there was a presence. And um, mm -hmm. eventually it stopped. I got up. I had to tell somebody. I Skyped a friend that was in Holland because she was the only person I could think of that was awake. And then after that, I just started to – now, this is 2010, so I've already been meditating every day for over 10 years. Yes, and the preparation. <laughs> right. So my meditations then became longer and with the intention – of feeling that energy again. That's what I really wanted. I wanted to recreate that experience for myself. I wasn't thinking about making contact with anyone or channeling anything. I just wanted to feel that again. But I'm, as I'm doing these things, you know, I'm also focusing on who are these aliens? Like who was <laughs> I connecting to? I'm thinking about them, but it, but I'm also really focusing on the experience and. Um, that went on, so that was March, so that went on for a, a while. And then I started to have these experiences where I get into these deep states of receiving energy, and I would um, have the dry heaves or retching, as, the, as some people call it, where it's like you're throwing up, but you're not actually throwing anything up. Um, so I thought that was odd, and I thought, Maybe I'm trying too hard or something, but it also felt like something wants to come up and out of me. So I went to, I'm still going to Abraham workshops and I'm, I'm telling people about it. I remember uh, in March, a week after the, the, the thing happened um, in March, a week before an Abraham cruise. So I actually got up on stage at the Abraham cruise and, and was able to ask them what was going on. I forget exactly what they said, but um, it was, you know, after afterwards, Esther came up to me and said, something big is happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, so 
I'm still going to these Abraham workshops. So then now we're in uh, October, and the, we, they, they have these really intimate workshops in Asheville where they have less than 200 people. Well, that used to be the case. I think it's different now. But um, they had these, these amazing workshops. Sometimes they were three days long. Um, and I was at, I don't know if this was day one or day two, but I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm tuning into the energy and I feel the dry heaves coming and I had to stop them because I didn't want to be doing that in the middle of this, you know, workshop where the focus should be on Esther, not me, and what she's doing. So I, I turned to my friend afterwards and I said, I hope that didn't distract you. I'm sorry. And, and she said, yeah, what was that? <laughs> so... That night we sat in a hotel room, me and like four or five other friends, and they all had their questions ready for me. And I just sat there and felt the energy, and it moved me, and it moved, uh, you know, uh, possibly made noises I can't remember, but no words were coming through. So everyone said, okay, you've got to ask Abraham about this. So I'm sitting there the next day, and even though I, I really wanted to, get Abraham's take on it, I didn't raise my hand for the first half of the day. And the second half of the day, one of my good friends that I went to the workshop with, she was in the hot seat first. And I'm sitting there while she's talking to Abraham, and she's talking about something that, that really resonated with what I was experiencing. And I'm just looking over at my hand, and my hand is raising itself, mm -hmm. slowly going up. And then by the time my friend Ann gets out of the out of the hot seat. It's almost all the way up, and I just give it that last final push, and I felt, you know, just all this energy moving through me. And of course, I got called on. So I went up there and I asked them, "What what's going on? What should I do?" <laughs> and they said, um, "Keep doing what you're doing. It's just what you're experiencing here is resistance to the energy. That's what the dry heaves are about. That's what all of the you know, the the feeling like something wants to come through you, but you're not letting it through. So they said the only way to do, to get through it is to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So I said, great, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> so for for from that point forward, uh, four times a week, I would practice with someone who would just sit there and wait for me to get into the channeling state. And I it was easy for me to get into the channeling state, but what was hard was to make words out of it. Mm -hmm. so eventually, I started making sounds that sounded like parts of words. So I would be sitting there and going, p -p 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 -t 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 and then eventually, the creators, who didn't give me that name at first, I had to get that name uh, a lot later, um, they came through, and the very first thing they said was, we are here for you. And that's what they always say whenever they come through. And that's what that's how it all started. And from there, I, I kept, um, you know, all I knew was that this is something I wanted to do and that I had to do it, that I couldn't wait for people to come to me and say, hey, will you channel for me? So I would reach out to people and say, hey, do you want me to channel for you? Or can I come do an event, a group event, and we'll invite people and they will just put out like a tip jar. And so that's how it started. And then, you know, I just kept channeling more and more beings after that. It, it took me a while. It took me like three years of channeling the creators before I started bringing in other beings. But Okay. All right. Well, that's beautiful. We'll talk about then recognizing the different energies and the frequencies what I love there, Daniel, is that you didn't freak out. Uh, when you started to, you know, receive that message whisper, yeah. or start to form the words, you got out of your own way and you allowed it to, to flow through you. You know, some people would think that they were going crazy. Yep, Jane Roberts did. Uh -huh. um, you know, the, the channel for Seth, who in my book is the best channel of all time. Um, Mm -hmm. She she definitely um, was freaking out about it. The woman who channeled um, A Course in Miracles, I don't know her name, same thing. 
she didn't know what was going on. She had no clue what, what was happening and wasn't sure she wanted it to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but lucky for me, you know, I was in that Abraham environment, which is very positive. Abraham's very positively oriented. You know, it's sort of their message. And so the, the thought never occurred to me of like this is that, that something bad could be happening. Yes, that's it. The thought never occurred. So that brings us to our next question because we are talking about higher dimensional beings. You even say it's our higher dimensional aspects of self and even extraterrestrial aspects of self. And so mm-hmm. that word aliens, that may trigger some to feel fearful, but from your experience, it is a higher dimensional being, and there's nothing to fear. What can you say about uh, higher dimensional beings and your understanding of them, uh, and, sure. and how really there's nothing to be fearful of, because we can always tell when things are negative or the energy is not right yeah if if it's a lower if it's a lower uh, frequency non-physical being then there are some definite red flags to look out for now they might come through initially and give you lots of information um, mm-hmm. But eventually it's going to become a, a manipulation. It's going to be, they're going to ask you to do things. Um, they're going to give your ego a, a lot of praise, like you're the chosen one, you're the savior, that sort of thing. That They really, this is not from personal experience, by the way. <laughs> I'm just speaking from what I've learned from mm-hmm. other people. I, I have a friend who had this experience. And this is exactly what happened to her. So they they will do that. They will give you uh, something that will actually work or be true, but then they'll start telling you that you have to do certain things. Um, so a, a higher frequency being, when you're channeling one of those, and if you do have an experience with a lower frequency being, it's important to just, Tell them to go to the light. Just keep telling them, go to the light, go to the light, go to the light. And send them love. You know, you don't want to get into a a fear-based relationship with any aspect of life, obviously. Um, And they don't have any real power over us. It's, you know, it's it's just they're available. They're they're there, (laughs) but we don't have to tune into them and we don't. We don't have to make ourselves available to them either. So the higher that people always talk about protection, mm-hmm. the best protection that you could ever have is to hold a high frequency. Now, if and I know that's easier said than done sometimes. So if you're if you feel that you're in a lower frequency, then you have to process that, which means you have to feel it. You have to allow whatever you're experiencing to be don't resist it don't be afraid of what you're experiencing even if what you're experiencing is fear just dive deeply into it and know that you'll you'll always be able to come out and that then it moves through you it's only when you resist something or judge it that it becomes attached to you Ah, so that's very it, interesting. Then you'll you'll be able to reach a, a neutral state, and from that neutral state, it's very easy to get into a high frequency state because it's our natural state to be in a higher frequency state. So, just breathing, focusing, focusing on your heart, um, putting yourself in a a place. You know, you can build a little sanctuary in your home or you just go outside and find a tree and sit under it or something. Things that naturally bring you into that higher frequency state. Then you're, that's, that's your protection. So if you're, in, if you're in fear and you're building up all these walls around yourself, blue bubbles and all these things that you hear people talk about, well, guess what? You're keeping out the good stuff too. Uh, okay. So, so don't... Separation is never the 
the answer. Segregation, separation, these are the, these are the definitions of what is negative. What is positive is, is communion, coming together. So it's just about sending out the frequency that is aligned or resonates with what it is you want to experience and then communing with that. So you, you put, do everything that you need to do that you feel you want to do to put yourself in that state, incense, sage, crystals, music, all the things that you like, taking a bath, candles, all of that, and then raise that vibration to the point where that's all you're going to connect with. And then on top of that, it's a great idea to state your intention for what it is that you want to experience. And so, okay, so I, I didn't really get to all of your question in all of that that I just said, so I'm gonna, I want to address the, the physical versus non-physical and the dimensions. Yes, so yes. Creators are non-physical. They're in the 12th dimension. Everyone in the 12th dimension is non-physical. There's, there's no physicality there, and everyone in the 12th dimension is a part of a collective. They recognize themselves as a part of a collective. So even Yeshua, uh, Archangel Michael, these are collective beings. They're not, even though we think of them as singular, they're actually collectives. Um, now ETs, you think about where we are right now. Humanity is in the fourth dimension. We just we transitioned. Some people say it was December twenty first, two thousand twelve, that we shifted from third dimension to fourth dimension, and now we're shifting into the fifth dimension. Um, I I agree with that. I agree with December twenty first as that date. And there are beings that are physical, that are extraterrestrial, that are making the same journey that we're making. And just like on planet Earth, just like not all humans have your best interest at heart, you know, you, there are some humans you don't want to meet in a dark alley. Um, the same is true with ETs. So you don't necessarily want to connect with just any old ET. You want to connect with a, a high frequency E.T., like from the movie E.T., <laughs> or Close Encounters, those are nice E.T.s, or the, the most recent uh, film that I love called Arrival, yeah. where they were aqu aquatic beings, mm -hmm. um, which we don't often think of, but you think of our dolphins and whales, these are extraterrestrial beings that we have right here on Earth. And so the connecting with a high frequency fourth dimensional ET is always a possibility too. In fact, I think some of them are living in our mountains and underneath the surface of the planet and even walking among us. That's cool. And then there's higher frequency and then there's higher frequency uh, still physical uh, higher dimensional ETs. So there's fifth and sixth and seventh dimensional ETs that are still physical. Once you get into the eighth dimension, you're transitioning into non-physical. So um, those are the beings that are available to us, and there's so many. You know, there's fairies. If you think about fairies, these yeah. are technically extraterrestrials, and they're fifth dimensional, a lot of them. Most of them, I would say, are fifth dimensional. So they're like... They're like where we are going right now, and they're the placeholders for us. They're, they're helping us along with other uh, benevolent, I think at this point in the fifth dimension, everyone's benevolent. The fifth dimension hasn't always been this place of uh, pure harmony and, and love and you know, compassion, but that's the fifth dimension that we're transiting into. Okay, that's very cool. So fairies are in the fifth dimension, and they're placeholders for us, so they fly, and you're saying that we, as we evolve into the higher dimensions, we too 
will be able to fly and have telepathy. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Yep. And so when All we have dreams, you know, when we have dreams of flying, that's just a precursor of, or maybe it's a remembrance of that ability within us. Sure. I, or it's so many different things can be happening uh, when we're dreaming. We can be having a, an astral plane experience um, where, you know, we leave our bodies at night so our physical bodies stay in the bed and our consciousness goes into the astral plane. And without a body, it's easy to see how you could fly, right? Or mm -hmm. it's that you have that experience of flying. Um, yeah, and the fairies, they don't need wings to fly. That's sort of like, like with angels. We, we sort of, uh, that's how we interpret a being that can float. Uh, or levitate or fly, whatever you want to say. So we give, we give them wings to sort of indicate that, but they don't need wings to fly, and, and um, neither will we, because fifth dimensional us is going to have a light body. So we're not only shifting dimensions, but we're shifting density. So we're becoming less dense and more light. So everyone now and this is this is what um when i gave you the the topic that for the show i was thinking in terms of like this is what channeling does for us it helps us to access more of that light more of that high frequency energy so uh, what a channel is really doing is they're not they're not just being used like a sock for a puppet, you know, a, a hand puppet. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, and, and they're not just being possessed either. It's, it's a merging. There's a merging of energies that's going on. There's a, an opening up. If you think of channeling as opening mm -hmm. yourself up to receive and letting in that which is of a high frequency and that feels good, you let that in, and then you you share it, you transmit it. So when people are having these experiences and they're sort of like hiding in their room with them, mm -hmm. um, I would say to those people, get it out. So even if you just do something with it privately, but you still let it out, so you're, you're toning or you're speaking or you're, uh, painting or dancing and and it's even better I think in terms of being better for us not like a judgment better but better for us as individuals and as a collective if you put it out and let other people see it let other people experience it then what you get when you transmit that energy and other people receive it, is you get feedback. So other people can say to you, oh my God, that's what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. Or uh, that, I can't believe you used that analogy because I've been thinking about that all day. Or it bolsters the person's confidence when they share it with other people. Of course, you've got to be selective about who you're sharing this with. I really want to share it with your fundamentalist Christian parents, you know, or or siblings or whoever whoever you have in your life who's going to be a little bit more closed off in yes. the experience, um, or even an atheist, you know. Uh, um, atheist might think you're just crazy or deluding yourself, but um, yeah. So share it. So get get it out there, and and that's how. Like I said earlier, we have so many people channeling now, so many people bringing in this high frequency energy and sharing it and creating this network around the globe. And of course, we have the internet to help us do that too with all the different ways in which you can share things now. Yes, okay, I love what you said there. We, you know, I'm, I'm almost gonna say that so many of us may not realize what's happening 
um, but when we sit in meditation and we allow ourselves to experience it, like you said, um, channeling is allowing ourselves to open up to more light, allowing ourselves to receive and let in the higher frequencies. And so there is, I don't really want to label it by saying a responsibility to share it, but there, there really is a need for everyone to share it, to get it out through toning and speaking and painting and dancing, you know, just the right message for those who need to hear it. So thank you for that. You are on a mission to teach people to channel themselves. And so let's talk a little bit about that because the creators actually come through and share how we can channel ourselves, right? So I guess now would be a great time to uh, bring in the creators and maybe ask them some questions, ask them some sure. questions about how we channel and also personally I know there's some questions about moving into 5D even more. So yeah. um, what do you do when you when you go to bring in the creators? Okay, so this is a this is like a another part of that that unfolding story for me, where initially the creators um, said over and over through me, sing and ring, ring and sing, sing and ring, ringing and singing, singing mm -hmm. and ringing, and um, I eventually went and took voice lessons, and um, the the teacher that I I went to her studio was called Singing for Your Soul, so it was a perfect match. Mm -hmm. And we worked together for over two years. At some point, she she said to me, "Do you want to uh, tone as a way of get of warming up your voice?" And, and I said, "Sure, let's do that." So we did it, and synchronistically, I was um, listening to these recordings uh, by another channel, Wendy Kennedy, who um, was channeling about the power of tones and sounds. So. I really wanted to channel, um, or not, I didn't think channel actually at the time. I thought I want to learn how to make overtones. And my my teacher, Kimberly, said, well, I would love to uh, teach you that, but I don't know how to do it myself. She now does know how to do it herself, but at the time, she didn't know how to make overtones either. So then the next thing I know, the creators are bringing through these overtones. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people think, Oh, when Daniel's doing these things, it's to get him in the channeling state. And in actuality, this is the channeling. This is the, cha this is the beginning of the channel transmission that will eventually culminate in we are here for you and then a message for, for everyone. So as you sit back and listen to these sounds that are coming through me, uh, know that they're working on you, that these sounds are powerful. When, whenever you uh, are in the presence of an overtone, you're being worked on multidimensionally. So it's not, it doesn't just sound pretty, it also, and I don't know exactly how that works, um, but it's doing something to us on a multi-dimensional level. So that's what I, and it'll be two minutes or longer of this, and then they'll come in, they'll say, we are here for you. Then they'll, they'll bring through a message, a general message for everyone, and then uh, when they're ready for the callers, they'll let you know. Okay, well, we are looking forward to this, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Yes!
collective of non-physical beings and you will experience us as pure consciousness. Now you may wonder how it is possible to connect with a collective from the twelfth dimension when you are in the fourth dimension right now. And we say to you that knowing is not necessary. Knowing how to do it implies that the mind has to be involved in the process when instead what you really want to experience is something that goes beyond what your physical mind is capable of comprehending. And so your channeling is going to come about in spite of your mind and in spite of your beliefs about it. How does that work, you might wonder? Well, you are more than just a thinking being. You are very much a feeling being. And when you feel yourself in a higher frequency state, such as the state that you are in when you are in love. Notice we didn't say in love with another person. Another person does not have to be involved for you to be in love, in the state of being that is love, the frequency that is love. As you put yourself there, you automatically find yourself in a higher frequency state. In fact, you are in that moment connecting more deeply with the source energy that you truly are. And of course, source energy exists everywhere in all dimensions. So, for you to feel for the energy that you want to connect with and to enjoy that experience is so much more significant so much more important than what your mind is going to get out of the experience. Initially, what your mind is going to do is it's going to tell you that what you're channeling is not very significant, that you're just repeating things that you already know, or these are messages that humanity could get from a variety of different sources. So your mind will minimize and diminish what it is that you are doing because the mind wants to stay in control, the mind being the tool of the ego. You will need to let go of all of these thoughts in the same way that you let go of thoughts when you are meditating so that you can hold a higher frequency state. 
you want to hold a higher frequency state while you are channeling and put yourself on a frequency range that is higher than what your physical mind is capable of holding. This is one of the ways in which you are all bringing yourself closer and closer to a fifth dimensional frequency range. Because the more of your time that you spend holding a higher frequency, the more acclimated you become to it. Just like when you are stepping into a hot bath and you need to dip your toe in a few times. And then you can get your whole foot in, your ankle, the bottom half of your leg, and then eventually you put your whole body in there. That's what's happening right now as you shift to a fifth dimensional frequency range. You're doing it little by little, experience by experience, and every time you put yourself into a higher frequency state in order to connect with higher frequency beings like ourselves, you get a little bit closer. Now, you may think that it's easier for you to channel a fifth dimensional being than a twelfth dimensional one, but again, that's your mind. Your mind is doing the math. Our channel's experience is that it's easier for him to channel a twelfth dimensional collective because we don't have a physical body. We are pure consciousness. So to connect his consciousness to ours is actually easier for him. Just like it's easier for all of you to channel higher frequency and higher dimensional beings than it is for you to be in a telepathic connection with one another. So those are a few things that we wanted to share about this experience of channeling. We are sure that more is going to come up as we speak with all of you. We're ready now to take your questions. Beautiful. That toning was magnificent. Yeah. And we could hear different harmonics. Was that the voice through the channel only, or were there other instruments? That was the channel's voice only. Amazing. Very amazing. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this energy, this light that we are holding within our body. It does accelerate ascension. It does assist in, assist in the shift to 5D. And how does the brain change then with this energy? It's something that our brain is not used to holding. Correct. Well, it's more than just the brain. It's all of the cells of the physical body are going through a transformation process. So as your consciousness shifts, so does your body, which has its own consciousness. And so you will still be connecting with a body in the fifth dimension. It will be less physical or less dense than what you are used to. It will be a light body that you incarnate into or that you connect with. And it will be easier for you to maintain that body than it has been for you to maintain your physical body. You won't need food or sleep, for example, because you will be accessing what you need to access directly. Now, you still will have the opportunity and the choice to eat if that's something you want to experience for flavor, for example for pleasure, but it won't be a necessity. And so 
all of the cells, including your brain cells, are undergoing a transformation and upgrade where they are going to hold more light so that eventually you are just operating as a light being who thrives on light rather than needing something physical in order to fuel yourself. So the shift to 5D, it is underway. It's been underway for yeah. decades, and we're feeling the peak in it. Can you offer a timeline uh, or a window of when this shift will be happening to the majority, if not the entire planet? Well, we are very happy that you used the word timeline, although we believe that you meant it in a different way. So timelines are like probable futures. This is what Seth called a probable future. And there are many in front of the human collective, and there are many in front of each individual. So as each individual encounters different material, different teachings, different predictions about what is going to happen or how this transition is going to be completed, or even those who encounter material that says that it already has been completed and you're all just continuing to create what it is you expect. You see, so there's a lot of different theories out there, a lot of different information. And each individual needs to decide for themselves what resonates with them and also what it is they want to resonate with. So if you want to resonate with the story or the prediction that humanity is going to shift completely within three years, and that you're going to do so without a major catastrophic event, then you can certainly choose that timeline for yourself. And the way that you choose a timeline is by how it feels. So as you line up your vibration with what it is you want to experience, you are lining yourself up with a timeline, a probable future that gives you the experiences that are representative of that vibration that you're holding. Now, if someone over here is saying, well, there's going to be a massive solar event, it's going to knock out all the, the electronics, and you'll have three or more days of darkness, and it's going to be this dark night of the soul, literally, for many individuals and only a certain percentage of you are going to make it through that. If you resonate with that, ask yourself why. Why do I resonate with that particular version of what's going to happen or what could happen when there's another version of the story over here that doesn't involve catastrophe and massive amounts of death. And then what do I want to resonate with? What do I want to be in the flow of? And you put yourself in that. You stop Googling things mm -hmm. about this event that's supposed to take place. And instead, you align yourself with a gradual shift in consciousness where people help others who need help. So as those of you who are awakened know, there are a lot of people on the planet who are not. It's hard to have a conversation with some of these people, but as they undergo the changes that you've all already experienced, then you're going to be able to help them to make their transition. Thank you for speaking on that. You actually were able to understand my entire question and my next question. I love that because 
we all choose new earth in a gradual shift in consciousness and everyone Ooh. listening here knows that we are here to help others with that shift we are choosing an optimal timeline that does not in, uh, not include a catastrophe of any kind and Ooh. a gradual shift so thanks for that clarification it is up to us to hold the frequency of 5D. How we hold the frequency of 5D, can you explain how that affects others? Very good. So you are all affecting the human collective consciousness whether you realize it or not. Many times people will come to us and they will say, what is my purpose? What is my mission? What am I supposed to be doing? Something like that. And we say to you that you are here to determine that for yourself. Mm -hmm. You are here to discover what lights you up, what brings you joy, what it is you want to do. And that doesn't mean that you have to do it for the next 50 years either. Just because it lights you up now, just because it's what's interesting and exciting to you now, doesn't mean it always will be. So usually when a person asks that question, they're thinking in the third dimensional way of, well, I need to choose a job for myself and stick to that job until the day that I retire. So should I be a second grade teacher or should I aspire to be a firefighter or what is it that I can do to be of service? And we wouldn't want anyone to choose either of those professions or any profession for yourself that wasn't something that lit you up and brought you joy because then even though you might be going through the motions and telling yourself, well, look, I'm doing all of these actions, I'm teaching children, I'm fighting fires, I'm working with the elderly, whatever it is. I'm going through the motions every day, I'm, I'm fulfilling a purpose. But if you're not doing it in joy, then what is the message that you're sending to the rest of the collective consciousness of humanity? Are you really saying that you're all martyrs you're all here to sacrifice yourselves for the greater good? Or are you here to show other people that you can live in joy and bring joy to others and help others raise their vibration, which is what humanity really needs. Humanity needs help in understanding, first of all, what vibration is, how to feel it, how to access it, how to send it out as a signal, and then what you do will carry that vibration in it. So it doesn't matter what you do once you're holding that higher vibration. It will be grounding higher frequency energy onto Mother Earth, sending it out on a grid across the surface of this lovely planet of yours and it will be accessible to all other beings beautiful yes and so you've just answered another question of what it is that we do to bring out our highest purpose on this planet it is to do what it what we want to do what brings us yes. joy and that they will lead us to the next one yes as you allow yourself to do something silly or to do something that at your age, should you really be doing that? <laughs> yes, of course you should. If it's something you want to do, even if you have no chance in your mind of ever becoming successful, quote unquote, at it, why not start your acting career at age 50? or your singing career at age 60, why not 
start painting at age 70. Who is stopping you from doing these things? No one. Even if you recognize that if you were to take a poll amongst all the people around you, then you might not get a lot of encouragement. You don't need to make your decisions based on what others believe is possible or what others think you should be doing. Can you give us advice for overcoming the ego? Oftentimes we hear the directive. We can even write down the directive that we hear from within. And when we go to take action, something happens. The ego steps in in a way that's either inflated or sabotaging. How can we yes. work with the ego as we go through this shift? Yes. Well, very good. The very first thing that you did there is you helped yourself identify the patterns of the ego, the types of things the ego will say or do to get in the way of what it is you want to do. So once you recognize what those things are that the ego says and does, you can become more aware of what's happening and you can take a different approach. You can love your ego. You can tell your ego that everything is going to be all right, that the ego is coming along for this ride, the ego is not going to be abandoned and uh, have to suffer all of eternity without you as you ascend. You bring your ego with you. Your ego is a, essentially your sense of self. And your sense of self is just expanding. Your sense of self just needs to practice feeling what that's like, feeling what that means to you in a visceral way. Okay, beautiful. We will take some questions now from our listeners. If you're okay. on the phone, listeners, star two will allow you to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Meanwhile, Harvey has a question over the chat. Will everyone ascend into the fifth dimensional matrix or will there there'll be some that do not ascend? Some will not and it will be a choice to not ascend. It won't be because they were judged as somehow not making the grade. So that's a way, another way that you can see teachings out there of people saying that only certain people are going to make the shift. And these are the people that are the good ones. They're the ones who are doing good and the bad ones are the ones that are not making the shift. But if you think about this logically, realize that you always needed someone to play the role of the bad guy in order for you to have the experiences that you wanted to have. So they're not inherently bad, they're just pretending to be bad. And that was something that they chose for themselves before they incarnated and it's actually the harder path. It's, it's the path with more negative emotions the path with feeling more alone and more separated, more of a separation from source. And so it's not about deserving to make the shift. It's about what that particular soul's journey has decided for itself would be the optimal journey. So if someone doesn't want to shift to the fifth dimension, then they can go on having a third dimensional experience on some other planet, in some other star system. They don't mm -hmm. need to, it's not like all of you who are incarnating here on Earth only have the option of in continuing to be on Earth and be fifth dimensional or to no longer exist or to be on some sort of uh, version of 
earth. The, the earth is done with the third dimensional experience. So the earth is shifting with you. So if someone wants to have a, fifth, a third dimensional experience, they will need to go incarnate somewhere else. Okay. Thank you. I know all of us listening are ready to leave the frequencies of the 3D. Okay. All right. Well, Marilyn has a question. She she is uh, common to other people who are going through this. She asks, could you tell me if I'm going through a final clearing of old beliefs and agreements? I'm wondering if I'm purging or just depressed not asking for any medical advice, just would like to know if this round of old stuff coming to the surface and weighing my heart is something I need to go through. Yes, and we did want to touch upon ascension symptoms, so we are glad that you have brought this up. So ascension symptoms can look anything like headaches, depression, nausea, fatigue, pain, soreness, and anxiety, many other experiences that you've all had that you go to a doctor and the doctor doesn't know what to do for you or what to give you or even have a diagnosis for you. So a lot of people are getting diagnosed with chronic fatigue, syndrome, fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr, they have these symptoms that make life harder. You can still live. They're not life-threatening, but they make life harder. So what you want to do when you're in a state like the one that you're describing here is to surrender to it and at the same time to make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can because, again, you're not here to suffer. You're not here as martyrs, but you are doing the work. And doing the work over a long period looks like a chronic illness to some. Or it looks like being tired for decades because doing the work requires you to go within more. And if you had the enthusiasm for life that you want to have and all the energy and vitality that you wanted to have, then you'd be more likely to be out doing, 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 and doing some more rather than going within yourself and finding what is at the core of all of this. So what is at the core for many of you who are depressed is the lifetimes that you spent on Atlantis and Lemuria, especially those final lifetimes where you saw your entire world come to an end. And as you are all on the brink of shifting in a way that Lemuria and Atlantis could not, you are bringing back some of those uh, traumas, those memories, and those emotions that need to be processed and cleared. So again, processing just means allowing, diving into, feeling, embracing, and then ultimately letting go of all of the judgments and the fears around the process of processing so that you can come to a place where you can create the type of shift that you all want to have. Beautiful. Would you say that more, well, here's more questions coming from our audience. So when we are not creating the desired outcome, taking longer to manifest, would this be something within us that still needs to be processed to allow it in? It will always come 
when it is best for you, when it serves you best to have that experience. Now keep in mind also that if there's something that you're wanting to create that you haven't created yet, you are also experiencing something that you won't be able to experience in the fifth dimension. You are giving yourself the opportunity to experience anticipation, excitement for something that has yet to happen, that you've yet to experience. Once you are fifth dimensional and everything manifests instantly, you won't be able to have that experience anymore, which means that there's the possibility that you will appreciate it less. So let's give you an example in the quote-unquote real world of the third dimension. So let's say a child goes to his or her parent at the age of 16 and says, I would like a car. And the parent says, you will appreciate the car much more if you get a job and you earn the money and you buy your own car. And maybe the first car that the teenager will buy will be barely running, barely functioning. But then as that person continues on in his or her life and they get a better car and a better car and a better car, they will appreciate that Lexus or whatever it is that they are driving so much more because of what they've experienced than if the parent just said, well, yes, I've got an extra $40,000 lying around and I'll just buy you that Lexus now. <laughs> so that's the experience you get to have. That's what you give yourself. So we would say that, and many people wonder this. They wonder, what am I doing to block myself from having the experiences that I want to have? And we say, don't look at it that way. Look at it as that those things are coming to you. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for the, those things to come, you don't have to be looking at your watch every five minutes. Instead, you could be out enjoying the world as it is and enjoying your life as best you can. And then time flies. And then you find yourself having experiences that you didn't even know you wanted to have, but you weren't trying to create them, so they came much easier. So the important thing is to enjoy the experience, enjoy the journey, and not to do processes and exercises all day, every day to make something happen in your life that you've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Simple. Simple directive. <laughs> Not so easy all the time. Okay. Thank Correct. you for that. We're going to our callers. Um, we have a few callers I can unmute for the remaining time today. And we'll give you time to ask your question. Uh, no follow-up question, though, okay? So let's go to uh, Jean Marie in North Dade, Florida. Hi, Jean. You are unmuted. Do you have a question for the creators? Hi. Thank you for taking my call, Lauren. Um, and thank you. I, I'm calling because um, sometimes when I meditate, I feel that my hands are um, involuntarily going, you know, higher or going in different directions. Yeah. So I would like to know. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I would like to know um, what is it exactly that um, that 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 means? And if there is it's anything is a, is a healing that I need to do, or what is it that they're trying to communicate? Do you with enjoy? Me? Do you enjoy the experience? when you're meditating and your hands are moving? Yes. Very good. So there's certainly nothing that you need to do differently. In other words, this is the beginning of something. This is something that is unfolding where these are the initial 
experiences that you're having of working with more energy than you are accustomed to working with in your physical body. So your physical body is accessing higher frequency energies. Those energies, like if you were to imagine yourself drinking a lot of coffee and then your body starts to move, you start to jittery, being jittery and uh, shaking your leg and wanting to get a lot of things done, move around a lot, because you have all this extra energy that's coming to you from the caffeine. But instead of drinking coffee, you're accessing energy directly so it feels much nicer and smoother and it has a nice uh, tone to it. And uh, eventually this will become more if you allow it, if you don't fear it, you give in to the experience of it, then you will find that it evolves into more movement and then perhaps eventually sound coming through you, perhaps a light language coming through you, and then even words in English or some other language coming through you. So just allow the experience to continue, anything that happens while you're meditating, you can pretty much guarantee that if it's happening while you're meditating, it's a good thing. Okay, beautiful. It's unfolding. All right, Jean-Marie, thank you. Okay, that's good for all of us. It is real and it is happening and it is an experience for us to feel into. Okay, we're going to our next caller. This is now in Miami, Florida. Last four digits of the phone number, 4225. Hi, you're unmuted. What's your name, please? Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Hi. Um, my question is, um, um, a couple, actually, years ago, I started to to channel, I suppose it's a light language. Now, there are times when um, when I meditate and I feel the presence and um, it's almost like something is coming through me, but um, like you mentioned before, I feel like my body is resisting. So it's almost like consciously I'm like effortly like trying for the words not to come out, but there are times where it's so forceful that it just blurs out. And um, it's not a language that I quite understand yet, but um, there are times where it's, I feel like it's translated to me, and I would just like to get a more perspective about what's going on and will I eventually understand it. One of the beautiful things about light languages is that you don't have to understand them in order for them to be effective and in order for them to help yourself and others. In fact, going beyond the mind, as we were talking about earlier, you want to go beyond the mind. You want to be in a place where comprehension is not the main goal. The main goal is achieving a higher frequency state. And these light languages will continue to come through you, and it is just your way of getting you into a space where you're going to be able to access energies that you will be able to translate eventually into English or whatever language you want to translate them into if you speak another language. So it's important for you to continue the process of allowing this to come through you, but it's not important for you to understand what's coming through you right now or ever. One of the things that light languages give you is they give you the freedom to speak in a way 
where things don't have to make sense to anyone. And that's very liberating because that allows you to be much more in the flow than if you're channeling and realizing that the sentence that you're speaking as you're channeling needs to make logical sense. There's a slowing down of the process when that happens, whereas the light language is more pure. So what you're channeling now is a more pure version of the light that you are connected to. And we would say that right now we're doing a lot of connecting to Pleiadian energy. And so that's what's coming through you. So now you can set forth the intention when you sit to do this that you're going to connect with the Pleiadians. And let it flow through you. Let it be effortless. Get out of your mind. Let go of your mind. Let it not make sense to you. And instead, appreciate the beauty of it. And appreciate the energy that you're sitting in, the vibration you're holding. So much more important than for your mind to understand something. You, you all tend to think that there's some message that you need to get and that you're somehow keeping it from yourself. There is no, no such thing. You will always get what you need one way or another, whether it comes through you, whether it comes through a billboard or something you see on Facebook or a YouTube clip. It will always come to you. You're never going to keep messages from yourselves that you need to hear or information that's going to help you along on your journey. You'll always get it. So just relax and be in the flow and know that, believe that. Trust in the universe, trust in yourself and the creation of your reality. Yes, beautiful. All right, thank you for that question and that answer. It is wonderful that light language is a freedom to be spoken in a way that does not make sense in enjoying and appreciating the energy and intending yes. to feel that energy, to connect with that energy. Okay, beautiful. We're going to go on to our next caller. Inverness, Florida is the phone number ending in 2021. Hi, you're unmuted. What's your name, please? Hi, Lauren. It's Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I, well, I have so many questions. Um, but I guess um, what, I, what I'd like to ask, is sometimes in meditation and sometimes, you know, right before sleep when I'm drifting off, you know, I, I will get the, you know, the kind of good feeling of get a blue flash lot of flashing light to my left or I'll get, you know, white flashes on the right or my whole brain will seem lit up. And then, you know, other times I'll get, you know, like faces and <clears throat> sometimes you know, faces that, you know, aren't very um, clear, you know, but you can kind of see the eyes. And, you know, I know, um, thank you to the caller that asked about the purging and the releasing. It seems like that's been going on forever for me. But, you know, some of the faces and things, you know, aren't that pretty. So what is, what is going on or can you... Um, um, <clears throat> say anything about this. When you put yourself into a higher frequency state, you're often becoming then a sort of lighthouse for beings that need assistance. So they will come to you in the same way that when you hold a high frequency and you go out into the world and you do this type of spiritual work for a living, people tend to come up to you and they want to get to know you. They want uh, to talk to you about something that's going on. The same is true 
with these beings that have transitioned into non-physical but are still looking for the light, they're looking for the way home. So when you have that particular experience, that's an opportunity for you to be of service and to help those beings go home, go into the light. And one of the ways that you do that, of course, is through love and compassion. So you always have an option as to how you're going to respond to something that's happening in your life, whether it's an experience like this or something that's more real and solid. And so when you have these experiences, welcome these beings into the light, tell them to go to the light, and send them there lovingly, not out of fear, not because you are just wanting to get rid of them, but see yourself as the gatekeeper and you've uh, tapped into something that they were unable to tap into their entire lives. They were never able to achieve that state of being that you've been able to achieve in your meditation. And so, of course, they do feel attracted to you. And this is something that you agreed to do before you incarnated. You agreed that this would be one of the ways, one of the many ways that you would be of service to others. And so by allowing them in and assisting them in that process, you are fulfilling a destiny of yours. And you get to decide how you experience this. You get to decide whether you see this as a blessing or as a burden. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Melinda, for your question. Well, this has been a magical episode, and I thank you so much. That's all the time for questions that we have. Sorry that we cannot get to all the questions, but as we let you go, the creators, can you yeah. give us some encouraging words for all the New Earth leaders to truly stand in our power? You're all doing so much more with your presence on planet Earth at this time than you recognize. You're all having more of an impact than you could possibly imagine. And we want you all to see this journey as one of joy and love and light rather than as something you have to do or something that needs to occur in order for the rest of humanity to make their ascension. In other words, you want to see it more as an experience that you get to have than as something you have to do. And just changing your perspective on all of this and welcoming in all of the energies and seeing yourselves as always being of service in every moment of every day is going to take a lot of that pressure off of you. And so we have enjoyed connecting very much with all of you. We are the creators and we love you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hey, <clears throat> it's me. <laughs> okay, beautiful words and beautiful reminders to not be so hard on ourselves. Simply be in joy, be in love, and be the light. Beautiful. We are elated, and we are feeling high vibrations. Thank you, Daniel. And again, I just want to say the toning in the beginning was like anything I've ever heard. Uh, it, it sounded as if, I mean, I could hear other frequency waves coming through. 
it was like you were playing a keyboard next to you because there were harmonics <laughs> in that tone. That that's a, yeah, that's what overtones are, yeah. They're, an overtone is amazing. Um, when you make more than one, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not, not trained musically, but it's <laughs> more than one, you know, <laughs> octave or something. And the they were, the yeah, but they were, they were moving up and down almost yeah. on a scale. Fascinating. Yeah. Really amazing. So, <laughs> wow. High frequencies, doing just the right thing for us. Well, that was really wonderful, and I am certain that the information that was presented by the creators assisted all of us listening into understanding more about what channeling is and how we can truly allow the energies, open to the energies, receive these energies. Daniel, you've even got courses. Again, this is your mission to assist humanity into learning how to channel. And so you have a special offer for everyone, and that is on how we can start to channel and accelerate our ascension journey. Can you share a little bit about what's in that package for us? Yeah, so you have, it, it's not just um, starting to channel because you've got the beginner's channeling class, which is two hours, so you can work with that for a while. And then when you feel ready to go to the next level, there's the intermediate group channeling class. These are classes that I've already taught that have, um, these are the recordings of the classes. So it's just like being there live because they're not uh, interactive. They're just me um, lecturing and channeling. And then the advanced group channeling class uh, where I'm channeling the whole time for the whole class. and um, you're all asked to do a lot of channeling in that one as well. So it's th there's six hours there of recordings that you can take at your own pace. You know, everyone's in a different state of readiness for uh, what each of these courses has to offer. And then there's also six about you know recordings that are about 11 minutes long each. And those recordings have uh, little activations within them, like activating your, your channeling chakra and a light language to activate your channeling abilities and things like that. So you can work with those. You can sort of um, sprinkle those in <laughs> where you feel you want to, or you could listen to all six of them in a row and then <laughs> and then do the beginner's channeling class or, or however you want to play around with these tools that I'm giving. And, and those tools, again, it, just like a lot of the processes that you'll hear in the channeling classes that I've taught, those processes can be done over and over again. Great. Beautiful tools to enhance our channeling abilities and to open to them and to witness you doing it too. Really, it is energy that moves through us and I feel that there is a responsibility to humanity to share it with everyone and that is your mission too. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that special offer and for assisting in this way. Well, Daniel, what a beautiful episode today. I loved hearing your story and all about the 5D and what a beautiful um what a beautiful empowering inspiring message that we can bring in that timeline that we wish wish to see without having to go through any of those lesser catastrophes or lesser timelines that might bring fear into people's lives. So that was a beautiful reminder. So as we say goodbye, I'd just like to have you wrap it up and, and say a few words in closing. Um, teaching other people how to channel is something that I, I really love to do. 
And so hopefully this will be a way that we can connect. Um, you can connect through the package and then you can connect with me as well after you've completed that, uh, all of those courses if you want more personalized instruction because I, I really, I, I actually have two clients today that I'm meeting with for, uh, I've met with multiple times to continue the channeling process. It's something that I really love to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Daniel Scranton, for allowing yourself to be open in this way and for sharing this with everyone else. This has been a beautiful quantum conversation. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Until Thank you, too, for listening and sharing in this space today. We leave you now with music from the universe, literally sacred geometry of music, as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music, available at AcousticHealth.com. Thank you.